Okay. Let's try this again. You guys have to just give me a second till this connects. Hey, Pooja, how are you? <laughs> Hi, it's finally happening. Awesome, awesome. I, I, I know, thank you. you. I, I I mean, can everyone see you? I can't see you right now. It still says waiting. But oh, I can really? hear you. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, but I can. That's so yeah, strange. That's so weird. That's yeah, so that weird. Is... Um, it says, hello? Yes. Okay, third time lucky. Oh, Can you see me? Finally, yes. Yes. I can see you. <laughs> Amazing. That's great. Thank you so much for your patience. I'm so grateful oh. to you. Thank you so much. You're amazing. You're so wonderful. Thank you for Thank keep you. trying to be so persistent. No, but that's, I mean, I've been wanting to do this because uh, I requested a couple of days because I actually wanted to read the book. And I have to say, great cover photo, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, I am great that I could do this and thank you so much because I just feel that you've been really inspiring and it's amazing that uh, you've been able to really uh, share your learning with us uh, and uh, having had been to an ashram him, yourself, you know, to come and share with us today, writing this book today, which is absolutely wonderful. I have to say I've thoroughly enjoyed the book. I think it's uh, so uh, precise. Uh, and it's so, uh, in terms of, you know, I love reading books and I love reading a lot of self-help books. And uh, I always, you know, end up reading a couple of books and I'm like, okay, but how do I actually change my life? How do I action it out? <laughs> and I love that you've given so many little, little uh, activities for us to do uh, to self-introspect. So I decided that this life is going to be great because I have a couple of questions for you. Perfect. Perfect. Thank and you so much, Pooja. And thank you for taking the time to read it. It means so much to me, honestly. It's, it's amazing. Okay. So I'm going to go straight to the questions if that's yeah. okay with you. Okay. So first I would like you to just share about like, you know, what made you want to become a monk? Yeah, good question. So I was born and raised in London. And I think I met the first ever monk I met, I was 18 years old. And I didn't really meet monks before that. And I didn't really know what they did. And I really didn't know much about their life. But when I met this monk at 18, it had a really profound impact on my life. Because now when I look back in hindsight, when I was 18, I'd met people that were rich, I'd met people that were famous, I'd met people that were beautiful and attractive. I'd met people that were knowledgeable and smart, but I don't think I'd met anyone who was truly happy and joyful. And, and he exuded that naturally. And I thought, well, well, that must be, there must be something about this person that he's doing that makes that possible. And yeah. at 18 years old, I just got captivated by that and wanted to pursue that and learn more about it. That's amazing. So it was like, what's the magic juice there on? You wanted some of yeah, that. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. And you're actually, you've studied a business? Yeah, I studied management science at university uh, at Cass Business School. And right. so that's business. where I studied for three years. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, so you became a monk, but you coexist, coexisted with your regular normal life. 
Not only for only between the age of 18 to 22, when I was a monk at that, before, right. sorry, between that time, I was traveling in my summer holidays and my Christmas holidays. I would okay. come to India. But then when I graduated, yeah. then I actually officially became a monk for three years. So how does it, how did you, and then now you're back again to, um, I would say the monk mindset. Yes. So how do you coexist? Yes. How do you coexist between these two things? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So I think for all of us in our daily lives, we all have yeah. to go to work. We all have bills to pay. We have families. We have responsibilities. But in that, we can also get very rushed and hurried and tired and fatigued. And even sometimes we can have a lot of anxiety and pressure. And so the monk mindset really exists. <laughs> The monk mindset really exists to help us find calmness in difficult times, to help us find stillness in troubled times. So how it coexists is by continuing to do what we do, but changing our mind and changing our thoughts and changing how we process thoughts. So we can coexist in two places because we're allowing our mind to be wired by all of the wisdom and then we continue to do the same work that we do. We wear the same clothes. You don't have to shave your hair or wear robes or you don't have yeah. to trade your, your life. You can do all those things, but we're going to do it with a different mindset and a different attitude. Right. So, um, you know, you, you talk a lot about, um, and you know, like you spoke about right now, about anxiety, you know, and I myself have this thing of, you know, overthinking things and uh, being anxious about things. So uh, what, what would you suggest is like the best way to deal with it? Absolutely. Overthinking and procrastination are probably two of the biggest things right now. So I think that's a really, yeah. really important question. I'd say the reason why we overthink is because we don't have enough real insight and research on the topic. So I'll give you an example. If I woke up today and there was a rash on my arm, and I decide to overthink, and I decide to diagnose myself using Google, I may end up believing that I have the worst disease on the planet. But if I go to a doctor or I go to a physician, then they'll be able to tell me, oh, this is some skin thing, whatever it is. I'm not a doctor, so I have no idea. But they, they may be able to diagnose it differently. So similarly, with our mind, if we sit there and we just try to overthink, 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 we can start thinking, so many negative thoughts. But if we approach yeah. a coach, if we approach a therapist, if we approach a teacher, if we approach a guide, if we approach books, if we approach podcasts, all of this content can actually give us insight about what we're struggling on. So it's easier yeah. to go to research and learn about the subject than it is to try and make up your own mind about it. That's true. And I think that and really helps because... Sorry. No, no, I was, I was just saying that. And, you know, the challenge we have is that schools never taught us about how to manage our mind. So yeah. it's crazy that we learned about everything. We learned about maths and geography and history and all yeah. of this stuff, calculus, but we were never trained in the, in the one thing that all of us have is how to manage our mind and emotions. And so no one can be blamed for it. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't judge ourselves. We shouldn't be upset that we overthink and procrastinate, but now we have to go to that school that helps us learn about it. True, true. I always believe that schools should uh, add another subject in their curriculum, which is meditation. Mm. You know, because I just feel that if you inculcate the culture of meditation in your life, as important as brushing your teeth, like, you know, you take a shower every day, you brush your teeth, but you're not really cleansing your mind, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think that meditation helps you do that. And, you know, you talk a lot about breath work in your book. Um, which I personally feel can really be transformational, you know, and the little small things that you talk about, like, I mean, I would let you, why don't you talk about it? Like how- No, you talking about it is much better. You talking about it is much better. It's gonna, you're gonna inspire- <laughs> no, we are, you, <laughs> You're going to inspire no, just, so many people. No, I think it's great because uh, like you said, you know, when we are anxious, uh, our breath, reacts in a different way when we're sad when you know when we're angry we tend to hold our breath or we tend to hyperventilate and I think that uh, it could also have the 
the other effect right in terms of that if you learn how to control your breath does it work that way if you learn how to control your breath you can actually change your mindset yeah absolutely so yeah. the good thing about our breath is that it makes the emotion tangible like it makes it feel real because everything's going on up here but yeah. actually our breath also changes so if you think about it we always say things like i'm trying to catch my breath or wait a minute i need to take a breath yeah or even in positive emotions we say things like he or she took my breath away That's or true. is it or isn't he or she breathtaking right like we also talk yeah. about it in a positive sense and so our breath is linked to every emotion every right. feeling is linked to breath and so if we learn to monitor our breath so i'll give you an example uh when i feel nervous and i get nervous too and when i feel anxious and yeah. when i feel when i feel like i'm rushing and that's probably the most common one when you feel like you're just rushing to the next meeting rushing to the next event getting ready for the next dinner getting ready for the next meeting whatever zoom meeting whatever it may be right now i just do this simple breathing practice where i breathe in for a count of 4 and i right. breathe out for more than 4 so you breathe okay. in for 4 and out for more than 4 and it just relaxes you straight down and so a yeah. simple technique like that i do it 3 times 6 times 9 times and you just start to see your whole body change your physiology changes right so this is something that's really simple and what i like you said that you can do it anywhere you can do it on the way anywhere work you yeah. can um yeah and and you know like i always think that the biggest superpower that you can ever have is being in the now mhm mm you know and um it it sounds really simple it sounds like oh you, you like you said you do it only like eight or nine times and it helps you but it's actually it can be challenging when you start yes like you know when i started doing yoga i just and you know in the start they tell you to meditate i find my mind wandering so much <laughs> yeah and it's just like 2 minutes <laughs> you know so yeah so do you suggest like start you know start how important is it though So meditation has so many benefits from synergy in the mind to rewiring your brain to boosting your mood to feeling more clarity and the best way I can explain it is let's say you feel you don't have time Let, let's say you say I don't have 10 to 20 minutes to meditate what ends up happening is you run around you get really really stressed and then you finally turn up to that meeting and everyone now feels your energy that you're stressed and that energy is contagious Now let's yeah. say you took that 10 or 20 minutes to meditate. Yeah. Yeah. And now you come to the meeting. Now you're so calm and you have so much clarity that you can actually help everyone in that room solve whatever they're trying to solve much quicker. And so meditation yeah. gives you clarity that actually saves you time, money, energy, conflict, all the issues. And so that 10 or 20 minutes makes a difference. But now what you're saying with the mind calming down Right. it takes time to learn for the mind to calm down so it takes it won't you can't calm the mind down in 2 or 3 minutes in a meditation it requires a bit more time and the reason yeah. why that's important is because you'll get quicker and quicker and quicker it's like if you're running or doing a gym yeah. workout you get better yeah. and better and better at that workout every time you do it so if you're running 100 meters every day you get yeah. quicker and quicker and quicker every day and so same with meditation that you can slow your mind down faster every day when you keep it consistent and so just taking out 10 to 20 minutes a day to just yeah. sit with the mind let it be loud and then watch it just become quieter and quieter quieter don't try and make it quieter just let yeah. it naturally calm down right and i think concentrating on your breath kind of brings you back in case yes. you end up you know wandering so that's great you know also i was thinking about like today we live in a world um, where you know there is so much negativity you know when we go on social media and especially with the times we are in now with the pandemic and what's happening in india it's it's like you know uh, you go on social media and then there's so much right there's trolls and um, all of that and how do you deal with that Yeah, I think first of all, I think it's really really important with 
with specifically in terms of dealing with the negativity on social media, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think first of all, we have to remember that there's also so much positivity. So I'll give you Can you hear me? Yeah, hey, yeah, I can Sorry. hear you now. Yeah, okay, okay, great. Uh so I was just saying that yeah. if you think about let's say let's say you get ready to go to an event and I'm just using the event to represent social media. Let's say you go to an event and 9 out of 10 people tell you you look wonderful and they say they love your dress, they say they love your shoes, they say they love your earrings, they say they love your bag and your hair. And then one person at the party says to you, "Oh, you know, you look a bit tired today." "Oh, you know, you yeah. just you don't there's something about you that's just not working today." You go yeah. home and you think about that one person more than you think about the other nine people. And so really change that even on social media. The only way to change that even on social media yeah. when we see the good things we just ignore them and so yeah. we we remember if you see a good comment you just go oh yeah yeah of course of course oh yeah yeah of course of course oh yeah yeah of course and then you see a negative comment and you think oh no this is this is my life and so we remember the bad times more than the good times because when yeah. something goes wrong we cry for a month and when something's good we celebrate for a day <laughs> and and we see that in our life all the time and so the way to deal yeah. with negativity is we really negativity in your life really appreciate it and then sometimes criticism or negativity can actually help us with feedback so if it can help us with feedback if we can improve ourselves then we should try yeah. and improve ourselves from it as well right i mean if it's constructive criticism correct correct if it's right. constructive if it's useful then we should definitely try and improve ourselves so do you think that it also <laughs> stems from like a lack of gratitude Yeah it stems from a lack of not even gratitude you're right it's on the right path but it's it's just what you said before it's just being present and appreciating the yeah. the positivity so it's it's almost like it's almost like we don't allow the positivity in in a deep way we right. read a comment that says you look nice today or we read a comment that says uh, you're so smart or we read a comment that says uh, this really touched me or meant something to me and we read it and we just think of it as 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 irrelevant almost and then yeah. as soon as you see that negative criticism you go oh no this is this is my truth this is my reality and so it's so important that we deeply allow each positive message to be received in our heart especially right. if it's something deep about us right yeah that's so true though that is <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, I'm guilty as charged for from Me too me that. too I do the same I do the same and I I realize that I really have like today you said so many kind wonderful things about my book it's it's so easy for me to gloss over them but but right. when someone says that what I try and do and this is a beautiful thing you can do whenever someone says something good about you sometimes yeah. we feel uncomfortable because we feel oh yeah. no I should be modest or I should be humble or what do I do Right so So when someone says something nice about you this is what we were taught to do as monks when someone says something nice to you think of the person that gave you that quality and pass on that thanks to them so receive the thanks from the person giving you thanks so you said to me jay i really like your book i think it's wonderful so i received that and then i thought of all my teachers that have helped me learn those principles and i just thought of them in my heart and i passed on all that thanks to them And, and oh, wow that's amazing yeah that's that's great because that happens to me where i you know someone will compliment me and i'm i kind of brush it off yeah i don't know why that happens but it just does and uh, that's actually that's amazing you know that's a, that's it's a great way to accept and yeah give gratitude even in the smaller things in life yeah so you may think of your parents you may think of your teachers you may think of your family and actually you can even think of someone who indirectly gave you that quality maybe they hurt you maybe someone hurt you and because of that you became a better person you can even thank them in that situation yeah that's so true <laughs> wow that's amazing uh, but like at what point does it 
you know you talk a lot about um, self confidence and um, you know ego right in your book and at what point does self confidence become ego that's a really good question so we have we ego does two things it either right. makes you believe you're the best at everything or it makes you believe you're the worst at everything but it wants to be the best of the best or the worst of the worst it doesn't want to be in the middle right. and the truth is the truth is that real confidence is i'm good at some things and there's some things i'm not so good at and so the way we stay in self confidence is by acknowledging our strengths developing our strengths working on them and realizing that some of our weaknesses will be other people's strengths and some of other people's weaknesses will be our strengths so i may not be able to dance i may not be able to sing but i i i like to speak and i like to share what i'm sharing and in the same way there'll be people in the world and that's why everyone's so complimentary that's what's so beautiful the world we live in is that when you recognize your strengths yes. sorry i think i lost you there oh oh sorry sorry yeah uh, when when yeah. you recognize your own strengths you yeah. actually learn to recognize and appreciate everyone's strengths so that's why it's so important to get a good understanding of your strengths and an important point with strengths is don't confuse inexperience with weakness don't think just because you haven't tried something that you're not good at it so many of us just write things off because we say oh no i can't do that but we've never even tried and so i'm sure yeah. there's so many things in your life that you've uh thought you couldn't do but then when you try it you realize that you can yeah true and i think it's important to also um uh, learn or realize that i i may be good at something but there's always someone who is better at it out there somewhere in the world you know and that yes. kind of brings um you a lot more humility and yes. you know something that i always uh, i read that somebody wrote about roger federer was that roger federer knew he knows that he is the greatest player of all time but mm -hmm. what he does choose to be is kind yeah you know he he's kind about he he's confident he, it's not that he not you know he knows he's good but it's just that he chooses to be kind yes and, yes and, absolutely uh, and i think that's great because you know you have to always apply that you know when no matter what you do in everything yeah you do. there's a there's a quote that the rock always shares so the rock dwayne the rock johnson the actor yeah. he always shares this quote he says uh he says it's nice to be important but it's more important to be nice and yeah. so he's always sharing that and and i think that people ultimately connect with us because of our character and our our heart and you know ego is just such a turn off as a quality yeah and but at the same time low self esteem is not good for us as well and so that's yeah. why deeply understanding both of our strengths and our weaknesses our flaws and imperfections and also our passions and purpose to recognize both of them is what brings us joy yeah true yeah <laughs> you've given me a lot to think about so it takes me some time to move on to my question <laughs> no no it's beautiful this is this is how it should be i you know i everyone who's watching uh, what what pooja is doing is so amazing because you sitting there and reflecting on it that's what we all need to do more like the way you're responding to every question is exactly what we all need to do more we need to just take a moment and we just need to yeah. reflect and accept it rather than like okay what's the next all right let's let's do the next question and so actually what you're doing yeah. you're training us you're teaching everyone who's watching this in how to actually process yeah. wisdom and and you know that's that's the way it should be done the I'll, i'll give an example the the other day uh i posted the book in india uh the right. to show how how well it was doing and how much support i was getting from india and someone commented saying i can't believe the book is 329 dollars and it's not it's rupees or something like that and oh. so someone comment they thought it was dollars because they were obviously not from india right and they didn't see the the rupees sign 
And and then someone commented and said, no, 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 that's rupees to them. Someone else commented. I didn't comment. Yeah. And then they said, oh, oh, this should remind me that I need to slow down. And and I thought that, like, you know, it was just such a perfect example of like how we judge so quickly or we try and move on so quickly. But if we just take a moment to really reflect, we actually find the right answers. Yeah, I think, you know, your book is something. Oh, I've lost you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So I think that, you know, the book, your book does that because a book like that, I personally feel you really have to uh, read a couple of pages and apply it in your life, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, they say knowledge is power, but I always feel that applied knowledge is power, you know, like what absolutely. You, like what's the point of getting your life experiences? And if, even if you take away one thing, from that it's it makes such a big difference in your life you know yes. like um, i loved where um you know you said about it, to your to-do list because i'm someone who loves to write and i love uh, writing my to-do lists and i love that you said like add a to be list yes what would you like to be okay and in order to do these things what is uh, what do you have to be yes Right. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, why don't you talk about it? Like, give me an example. I mean, what's in your book? Yeah. yeah. So, so for example, we say that, and this is a concept that started originating about ten years ago, and I think it's phenomenal. But it really exists uh, in the Gita as well. And so we're always doing. We're always trying to do more stuff, get more stuff done, try and meet deadlines. Yeah. But then we say, oh no, but why am I stressed? Why am I pressured? And it's because yeah. we have to be calm as we do what we want to do. But if yeah. all we're trying to do is get stuff done, then we will be rushed or we will be hurried or we will be stressed. So the first thing we have to ask ourselves is what state of mind do I want to be in when I'm doing this? And actually, if I'm not going to be in the best state of mind, then maybe I should postpone it or maybe I should do something to get myself in that state of mind. And that's a much better way of living because then you'll be happier doing that task. But if you're always just trying to get more done, I'll give, the best way of thinking about it is this. How many times do you check off everything off your to-do list, but you feel like you're not satisfied? Have you ever felt that way? You, many times. You, yeah, same. You do everything, but you don't feel satisfied. So what I say to people All is- All the other way around, where I've over planned and I've not done everything. Yeah, that too, much. that too, yeah, that too. Yeah. And that's why the solution to both of them is asking yourself, what's the one thing I can do today that will make today feel like a success? It's not how many things I can get done. It's asking myself, what's the one thing I can do today that will make yeah. me feel enthusiastic that today was a good day and then I'll be inspired yeah. for tomorrow as well. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. But you know, also, especially because like I'm a workaholic, uh, <laughs> you know, and I, I love being a workaholic. Uh, but, you know, I think when I plan my to-do list, it's also like, I I'm always like, okay, what did I get done? What did I get done? Right. Uh, but if I just add a, in my to-be list, if I added kindness for the day, or, or did I operate on the paradigm of love or stress? Yes. You know? And I can, it, it's like a constant check that I'm keeping on yes. myself. Yes. That did I do this? Did I today was I stressed all the time or did I do it with kindness? Did I do it with yes. love? And I just think that small thing which is going to take you 3 seconds can really change your day and give yes. you a sense of fulfillment. I love that. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's it's a moment by moment check. And it may sound tiring yeah. in the beginning, but actually it's really freeing in the end. It's really refreshing. Because the more you keep reminding yourself, the happier you are. Whereas when you allow your mind to just go where it wants, that's what drains us. Yeah. It's, all, it's almost like... You know, a, you also a, talk... Yeah, go on. Yeah, no, no, sorry. go, go, go. Go on. No, 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 no. It's almost <laughs> no, like... No, no, go on. Go on. <laughs> go on you go were on. saying something. It's almost like... No, I was just <laughs> thinking about something else. You know, you talk about... Um, and I think that's... It's a very small form of meditation too. Meditation doesn't really al always have to be about breathing. Uh, you know, it can be even something as small as this. And what I love about which in the book is that meditation, you talk about meditation in a very religion neutral way. 
a lot of people think that oh it's it's about one religion so, but it's not that is it no no meditation is an amazing practice and tool that is uh unified across all religions and spiritual paths and the three types of meditation that i share a breathwork visualization and mantra so mantra in india everyone will be very aware of mantra meditation but breathwork and visualization are really powerful and sometimes we don't realize just how powerful they can be so visualization is one of my favorite meditations uh you can visualize how something is going to go in your mind before you do it so that you feel less nervous and anxious so if you're going to an event or an award show if you're going to a meeting or a presentation you have to give at work you can just visualize in your head what will i do okay i'll open the zoom call i'll remember the notes i i'm going to do this i'm going to do that you go through the process so you don't visualize the result you go through the process in your mind and think what am i going to do and when you do that you then feel more prepared because it's almost like a dress rehearsal in your mind it's almost like a practice run in your mind right and so you right. can visualize that you can also visualize let's say something happened to you in the past and you don't think you behaved in the right way now i know many people who feel that they may not have said the right thing to someone that they don't speak to anymore and yeah. it may be scary to reach out to them and say it to them and so first we can visualize saying it to them in our mind and when we do that it becomes easier and then if we want to say it in person we can also say it in person so sometimes if i have to have a tough conversation with someone i'll first yeah. visualize it and walk through it in my mind to think about what will i say what do i think they will feel how will i feel when i say it and then when i do it in real life so you're almost practicing in visualization with yourself yeah D does that make sense yeah 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 it does yeah. it does yeah right which is so true and you know that i think makes you um just go through the process even more smoother like you like if mm -hmm. you're doing it for a meeting or like you said you know talking to someone um you also talk a lot about letting go and forgiveness in your book i and how important is that like forgiveness i i think forgiveness is really important and i think the most important part of that is learning to forgive our own selves because i yeah. think that that's the the hardest one that stops us from forgiving everyone and we we don't forgive ourselves for our mistakes when we were young we don't forgive ourselves for the relationships we got into we don't forgive ourselves for our mistakes in the workplace and that just every time you don't forgive yourself it's like creating a barrier towards your potential because now you're yeah. stopping yourself so you think that you're holding on to the past but actually you're just building more blocks in your future And so my recommendation to people is start with forgiveness of yourself realize that we all make mistakes including me all of us make mistakes uh, none of us are perfect and that's absolutely fine and that we all are just trying to learn and grow and i think rather than every day thinking to ourselves oh i wish i did that oh i should have done that oh i got that wrong imagine we ended every day and just said oh that's what i learned today that that's yeah. what i'll do differently tomorrow that's going to stay with me if you thought like that at the end of the day you wouldn't sleep with stress and you wouldn't sleep with pressure yeah but what about people um who done wrong you feel you they've done wrong you, you know um yeah like the act of forgiving them yes yes so so anyone who's done wrong to you the first thing you have to realize is they may never apologize and yeah. unfortunately we live in a world where people are even that person is not forgiven themselves that's why they can't apologize to you because they themselves are so pained by what they've done that they don't even want to face it and so waiting or expecting or wishing or wanting someone to change or to apologize will mean we will never be able to forgive them because we'll be waiting for a very long time. So the first thing we have to do is we have to give ourselves closure by really asking ourselves what is it that I need to learn from this situation? What is it about what this person did to me that I can grow so that I don't make the same mistake again of getting involved with a person that is acting in this way?
And that's really all we can do in that moment is we have to, we're not forgiving that person to forgive their mistake. We're not forgiving them because we believe that what they did wasn't wrong. We forgive them because we don't yeah. want to sit there every day and have this negative thought replaying. It's like saying you would never keep yeah. playing a bad song to yourself or you'd never keep watching a bad movie. But yeah. in our thoughts, we keep playing the same thoughts and the bad movies in our minds about that person, which just yes. brings us. Yeah. So all we're trying to do in forgiving them is just switching off the movie, switching off the soundtrack and saying, I want a new movie and I want a new soundtrack. That's what forgiveness is. That's true. And that's amazing because I think then the ball's in your court, you know, yes. in terms of yes. you're not waiting for them. It, it's something you can do. It's something that's within your control, you know. And yeah, exactly. I, yeah. And you feel lighter. You feel much lighter. And it's so true. You're 100% though, that right. It's so true that, you know, uh, what you said about like the person hasn't forgiven themselves. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we also hold on to so many things. And I just think it just makes you feel heavier and heavier. It's better to Definitely. get rid of that. Definitely. It's like, imagine life is already difficult. Life is already yeah. feeling like you're walking up a mountain. And now yeah. every time you keep grudges or resentment, you're just making your bag heavier and heavier and heavier. And, yeah. and you know, it's like, why not just empty a few things out and then allow space for new things as well? Yeah. So what is, what's your take on finding happiness? Mm -hmm. So I really believe that, especially from a monk's perspective, is that the goal is to look for meaning and purpose, uh, not to look for happiness. Because I'll give you an example. If Let's look at the pandemic, for example. Uh, the lockdown has been really tough for so many people in so many different ways. And if you ask someone to look for happiness, they'll say, Jay, you're crazy. Like, how do you, how do you find a happiness? Like, you know, I've, I've someone died in my family or I lost my yeah. job or, you know, how do I become happy about that? And that's why we can always find meaning and purpose. So I lost uh, one of my mentors during this time, uh, during COVID. Uh, and he actually died not from COVID, but from uh, brain cancer, stage four brain cancer. And he had it for a few years. And I miss him and I loved him deeply and I can't find any happiness in losing yeah. him. Yeah. But what I can find is meaning. So the way that you find meaning and purpose in a painful situation is that I know what he wanted me to become and I know the qualities that he lived by. So I yeah. know that if I keep trying to live by those qualities, then he's still living with me. And that if I can, if I can be of service and if I can be uh, aspiring to all the wonderful qualities he had, then I am really doing him justice and doing his life justice. And so looking for meaning and purpose in life will be serving us in the good times and the bad times. But if we just look for happiness, then it kind of serves us in the good times, but in the bad times, it's just really hard to find. That's amazing. And finally, um, I'd like to ask you that if there's one thing that you would wish that someone reading your book takes away, what is like yes. the one thing? Okay. Before that, I was going to say, Pooja, what I'm most excited about is meeting you when I finally get to come to India. So yes, that's what you I'm must. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm really looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to getting together with you. I was so excited to meet you this year, hoping that I was going to be there. So I'm, I'm hoping we get to do that when, when I come next time and when it's safe. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to connect with you in person. Uh, but For sure. Uh, I've always <laughs> seen your videos and it's something that's been really inspiring. And I remember when I first saw the video, I was like, who's the Shetty boy? You know, like, <laughs> what's he doing? What is this about? <laughs> and it's amazing that I've got to finally do this live with you and hopefully once you're here, uh, it'll be great to meet you. And thank you for waking up at 6 a.m. Guys, I have to tell you, whoever's listening out there, it's 6 a.m. where he is right now. That's why I look like this. The lighting's so bad where I am right now. Look, you can see the light. It's got lighter, lighter, lighter. Uh, yeah, I know, but you're looking great. It doesn't look like you've woken up just now. Uh, but, but whatever... Uh, he, 
I was yeah. actually I I've requested him to wake up this early because uh, I wanted more people to be present uh, in India when we do of this course. and uh, so thank you so much for doing that for me. No, you're right and and we'll do a I'll interview you for my podcast when I come to India so we can do it properly and and interview you about your amazing story and and your amazing mind and life but in regards to your question about what's the one thing that I want people to get yeah. from the book the the one thing that i want people to get from the book is i want them to be able to discover their purpose because i really believe that when we find our purpose we'll be confident not arrogant we'll be collaborative not envious or jealous and that we can start living a life that is true to us and not trying to just please anyone else and so i really really hope that people who read this book will discover their purpose and find their passion and be able to serve others in that way and and that would be the best thing in the world that if we had a world that was full of purpose then we'd yes. be all better people better parents better partners and and we'll start to see a more compassionate loving world yeah that's so true because if you know why you're doing what you're doing if you have like purpose um you can enjoy someone else's success a little But, more because yeah. you feel like great what they're doing but i Absolutely. know i can contribute in this particular way you know and that kind of makes you a little more uh, centered i would say so that's great i think this book will do that for you guys uh, thank you yeah it's not an ad because i have to say that i've actually read this book and <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't don't confuse that uh, but it's a great book and thank you so much it's been amazing speaking to you Uh, you're so wonderful you're so wonderful honestly i'm so grateful that we got to spend this time together and honestly i'm so grateful for us connecting and i really yes. look forward to deepening our friendship as well and getting to know each other better yes uh, let's do that soon once this entire pandemic thing has kind of calmed down yes down. Um, definitely but have a great day yes and thank you so much to everyone who's joined in too i hope uh, everyone's enjoyed it and uh, i'm just going to take one or two questions quick yeah sure a lot of people have sent me um questions please so let me just you know the book's name is think like a monk yeah and um uh, can they buy the book in nepal Yeah, I believe so. If they go to thinklikeamonkbook.com, then you'll find your local uh, place or whatever platform you have for books in Nepal, then you'll find it on there. I'm 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 pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So you can go to thinklikeamonkbook.com. And the book's also going to be in 40 languages, including several Indian languages. So if you'd prefer to read it in an Indian language in your native language, then please look for that on Amazon as well or the biggest channels Flipkart and others. in india and then you'll yeah. find it in yeah. your local language as well so if you don't want to read it in english then please go ahead and find it in your language yeah i think amazon has it so online is yeah. available so i mean if you accept the access this live uh, <laughs> you can just go on amazon and download the book yeah all right thank you so much amazing thank Bye. you so much thank you pooja see you soon. and save thank this you. save this because i want to post it as well <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to Awesome. Do that. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I want a new movie and I want a new soundtrack. That's what forgiveness is. That's true. And that's amazing because I think then the balls in your court, you know, yes. in terms of yes. you're not waiting for them. It it's something you can do. It's something that's within your control. You know, and Yeah, exactly. I, Yeah, and you feel lighter. You feel much lighter, and it's so true. You're hundred percent right. It's so true that you know uh, what you said about like the person hasn't forgiven themselves. Yes. Yeah, and uh, we also hold on to so many things, and I just think it just makes you feel heavier and heavier. It's better to definitely. get rid of that. Definitely. Definitely, it's like imagine life is already difficult. Life is already yeah. feeling like you're walking up a mountain. and now yeah. every time you keep grudges or resentment you're just making your bag heavier and heavier and heavier 
And, yeah. and, you know, it's like, why not just empty a few things out and then allow space for new things as well? Yeah. Yeah. So what is, what's your take on finding happiness? Mm -hmm. So I really believe that, especially from a monk's perspective, is that the goal is to look for meaning and purpose, uh, not to look for happiness. Because I'll give you an example. If Let's look at the pandemic, for example. Uh, the lockdown has been really tough for so many people in so many different ways. And if you ask someone to look for happiness, they'll say, Jay, you guys are crazy. Like, how do you, how do you find a happiness? Like, you know, I've, I've someone died in my family or I lost my yeah. job or, you know, how do I become happy about that? And that's why we can always find meaning and purpose. So I lost uh, one of my mentors during this time. Uh, during COVID. Uh, and he actually died not from COVID, but from uh, brain cancer, stage four brain cancer. And he had it for a few years. And I miss him. And I loved him deeply. And I can't find any happiness in losing yeah. him. Yeah. But what I can find is meaning. So the way that you find meaning and purpose in a painful situation is that I know what he wanted me to become and I know the qualities that he lived by. So I yeah. know that if I keep trying to live by those qualities, then he's still living with me. And that if I can, if I can be of service and if I can be uh, aspiring to all the wonderful qualities he had, then I am really doing him justice and doing his life justice. And so looking for meaning and purpose in life will be serving us in the good times and the bad times. But if we just look for happiness, then it kind of serves us in the good times, but in the bad times, it's just really hard to find. That's amazing. <laughs> and finally, um, I'd like to ask you that, is there one thing that you would wish that someone reading your book takes away? What is like yes. the one thing? Okay, before that, I was going to say, Pooja, what I'm most excited about is meeting you when I finally get to come to India. So yes, that's what you I'm must. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm really looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to getting together with you. I was so excited to meet you this year, hoping that I was going to be there. So I'm, I'm hoping we get to do that when, when I come next time and when it's safe. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to connect with you in person. Uh, but For sure. Uh, I've always seen your videos and it's something that's been really inspiring. And I remember when I first saw the video, I was like, who's the Shetty boy? You know, like, <laughs> what's he doing? What is this about? <laughs> and it's amazing that I've got to finally do this live with you. And hopefully once you're here, uh, it'll be great to meet you. And thank you for waking up at 6 a.m. Guys, I have to tell you, whoever's listening. <laughs>